World Habitat Day, when the world reminds itself of the basic right of all to adequate shelter and the need to shape the future of our towns and cities in a responsible manner. I express my hearty welcome to you all this evening to the latest edition of Beyond Square Feet, a lecture series conducted by Asset Homes every year to share insights on practical and sustainable techniques to make your home and the world a better place to live in. Eminent architects such as Padma Shri architect G. Shankar, architect S.K. Das, architect Madhav Joshi, architect Yetin Pantia, architect Mohan Rao, etc., who have proved their mettle in discovering and putting in place path-breaking living solutions, have shared their thoughts and experiences with us on this platform. The lectures are conducted on World Environment Day, World Habitat Day, and World Water Day every year. Bhakshanam, Vastram, Parpidam. Iva Manishin the Avashavum, Avakashumana. In Al Namudi the Polula, Vikasuri Rajangalil, Andasum, Adachurupumula Parpidangal, Bayuru Janavi Pagatinum, Ipolum, Aprapia Matri. Ashastri Ridi Lula Vikasinum, Janaba Hulyavum Konda Virpumutana. Namude, Nagarangal Lagate, Stidi, Angi etum, Paridaba Karumana. Asset Homes Sankari Pichavarina, Prabhashna Parambera, beyond square feet in Ipagamai, Loga Parpeda Dinamaila, Nam Kelkuanim, Charter Tayuan Vidikinada, Yuri Vishay de Kurchana, Snakeathinum, Sauhartathinum, Manisha Bentangalcum, Ere Vilakal Pikapeda, Inatil, Asset Homes, Itheriburi Chadanga Sankari Pikinada, Ida de Mayana, Evercum, Swagadam. Before we start the program for this evening, let's turn our mobile phones into silent mode to ensure ourselves a wonderful listening experience. Kaiba Vashimula mobile folder, Taiwai silent mode Irnamena Pirtikiana. To begin our day of deliberation and discussion on the need for creating safe, civilized, and inexpensive shelters for the common individual, we will invoke the Almighty. Friends, kindly remain seated as we play a prayer video. Logate Muruven, Taravada Ikaduan, Sarva Jiva Jalangalayum, Kalushimilade, Snake Kivan, Namuka Karyana Mena, Prabajas Rishta Vinodula Prathani Anani, Daivai, Iripadangalil, Todega. start with the main program of the evening, allow us to inform you a little about our company through an audio-visual presentation. Prabhashna Thalikya Kadakandayana Munbai, Asset Homes and Ekurchula, Uru Raswajitramana, Shraddhikimala. Less than a decade ago, Kerala witnessed a new dawn, the rise of a new sun, a new promise in the real estate horizon of Kerala. Asset Homes. 
Not only did Asset Homes fulfill the promise of building homes responsibly, but went far ahead to become the youngest builder to receive the coveted Crystal DA2 rating within just eight years of inception. Without doubt, Asset Homes is now Kerala's first choice when it comes to selecting a home. The Crizzle DA2 citation was received by Asset Homes brand ambassador, the youth icon of Kerala, Prithviraj. And yes, we continue the journey of building a new Kerala responsibly. <laughs> As it homes have left their indelible footprints across Kerala, as its signature, the landmark project at Karakutam Thiruvanathapuram became the first completed apartment project in Kerala to win the highest Crystal 7 star rating. As at Casa Grande, the iconic waterfront sky villas at Thevara Kuchi joined the league soon with yet another Crystal 7 star rating. As at Kasava, an aristocratic villa project at Kalamacheri Kuchi became the first villa project in South India to earn a Crystal 7 star rating. As at Homes is today the first builder in India with three Crystal 7 star rated residential projects to its credit. Unflinching efforts to create new benchmarks of quality, robust engineering, and uncompromised business ethics have fetched As at Homes numerous national and international accolades. As at Homes enjoy unwavering loyalty from customers across 36 countries of the world as we continue to deliver consistently our seven distinctive brand promises. Over the years, As at Homes have established credibility as one of the most trusted builders who complete and deliver quality projects on time. Quality guarantees the reliability and responsibility of our brand. Our latest initiative in ensuring quality is QVAC, a mobile civil engineering laboratory launched by Catherine Carlton, the worshipful mayor of Menlo Park, USA. As at homes have been consistently innovative, blending functional design with refined aesthetics to enhance the lives and investments of our customers. Being socially and environmentally conscious, Asset Homes always lead the way towards a smarter and more sustainable future by creating nature-friendly living environments. Asset Homes replanted a centenarian mango tree under expert guidance to give way to a new project, Asset Bellevue, thus setting a new paradigm in environmental conservation. For Asset Homes, customers always come first by introducing Asset Delight, an array of 17 unique customer services. Asset Homes have gone several extra miles to keep the customers happy. Delight Drive for a boat pickup, 25-year free insurance for apartments, and Delight Serve, a mobile app for booking maintenance services, are some of them. Asset Delight, number is open at the level Every Asset Homes property is a reputed address. Its choice location, unique architecture, unmasked facilities and quality lifestyle lend distinctive social esteem and appeal to the owner. Asset Homes also fulfill our responsibility to the society through unique initiatives like Asset Tree Them. Asset Homes offer a teak sapling to parents of all baby girls born at affiliated hospitals. The tree grows with the baby, thus creating an asset that will later on help her realize her most desired dreams. <laughs> As at homes have taken an urgent step to fulfill our responsibility towards the nation and its people through As of Beyond Square Feet, a tri-annual lecture series to discuss and promote ideas on sustainable living. The talks are conducted on the World Environment Day, the World Habitat Day and the World Water Day across select cities of Kerala. At the heart of the noble vision of Asset Homes is our most gifted pool of employees and they are the foundation stones on which our success stories are built. Our multifaceted talent pool was the overall champions of the Credai Fest. 
quality in delivery, customer-centric approach, innovative concepts in living, futuristic approach to sustainability, and undying commitment to the community are some of the features that help Asset Homes stand apart among peers, creating a niche in Kerala's real estate industry. No wonder we have become the first choice for Kerala's home aspirants. Kerala's first choice, Asset Homes, the responsible builder. Asset Homes, Kerala's first choice when it comes to aristocratic villas in stylish apartments. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now I would request Mr. Sudhir Kumar, we Managing Director Asset Homes, to formally welcome the dignitaries and guests. Asset Homes Day, Chalaga Shakti, Managing Director, Sri Sunil Kumar Argare, Vishish Chadadikalim, Sadhasirim, Aupajadikamai Swagadam Chayivanai, Sadharam Kshanikayana. Adhra Neeraya, Vishish Chadadikalim, Bahumayitaya, Shrodhagale, Asset Homes in the Beyond Square Feet in the E-Addition Lake here, Suswagadam. In the October Masam Mudan Didi World Habitat Day Loga Parpeda Dina Egdesha Muna Paditan Dil Mumba Aikirasha Sabude Talapatula Rajinal Journal Oro Menishum Talajai Kanula Urikurik Avagasha Munda in the Mulkushi Ella October Mastale Matit Tinglaicha Loga, Parpeda Dinamai, Ajik and Tijumai Kim Jesus in the Totacha Etana in the Namalude, Loga Parpeda Dina, Sunday Shomai Utiarin Pavanarmana, Mekhilima Ibantapeta, Samuhiya Samskaiga, Samram Paga, Sankarna Lam the Ne, Egades Mirudur Gudiola Mirana, Manava Rashiude, Jivana Sangal Pangalka, Charge the Bird of the Parpeda Sopling Lovaita, Minota. Ningunakaranga <laughs> Yatrake Sabutikte, I delivered an Arthabad Lambare, I guess, Santia Devi and the Kavi Vajanate. I know Tamako the Melagil. Malabarne is Samskaria Talastanamaya Kurikoda Adimai Itravel Chalanga, Sankari Pigan Gainel, Asset Homsula, Ahladu, Sandosho, Chadar Tu, Atma Rudi, and Ever the Day. Passport of the Day, Samudri, Jajak and Merudim. Kalpadal Banya, Ernard in the Chetrotil Nurmidil Gum Silpa Vajitidrim, Aindia, Uruvajas Tanamunda, and the Emperor Uru Nurmidi, Uri Pavanamai Maranada, other Nurmichikina, Pagodiodum, Adil Vasik in the Purishnodum, as Samarasa Padamaran. I cannot suffer the Randaiati, Patile, Anakovagaram, Egadesham, Nuti, Aruba, the Godi Manushirana. Power the Hidro, Alangil, Tamasik and Yogi Mela, the Edangil, Tamasikil Nodoi, Logotulu. Prakati Sahar the Mela, the Normana Didier Mulam, I am Vartikan of Sathirikim, United Nations, Middle Jordan. Adunda the Ne, Normano, Prakadim, Paristidim, Parasperm, Irajer Nilguna, Kadangalana in Naman Sagindi. Number Sadia, the Oro, Avevo, Boriavanam. Pradila Voro Karanaim Oro Victi. Number Kandale, Kayale, and the Malagana Sundry Chikino, Adola Pradile, Oro Charaj and Lame Sundry Chiku and Labatheda, Logam, number of Milton Yana. Itra Sangarna Maitula, Pavan Darmano, Paristi, my Bantapetta, Urushe Trula, Kodikode, Prabutraya, Janavikula, Agamsha, Alangaladula, Ulsuda, Inni Naranigavina, Uruholil. Idu boleh lebih banyak dalam urut persenggam seperti itu ni lebih dicari dari kita na ada dalam itu dokumen selagi sahaja. Namun kerana hari ini ni unda amur jenama kita ini nahl hari muda mudi orang ni nila awat terdaya 
അടിമല ഇണവേണം തങ്ങുവാൻ മറ്റൊരിടത്തടിയുവത് ഞെരുക്കം മുക്തി സിദ്ധിക്കുവോളം എന്ന് പാടിയ ഒരു വലിയ സംസ്കൃതിയുടെ പിന്മുറക്കാരാണ് മലയാളികളായ നമ്മളെല്ലാവരും ഓരോ ഭവന നിർമ്മാണത്തിന് മുമ്പും അവിടെ നിലനിൽക്കുന്ന ഓരോ വൃക്ഷലതാദികളോടും അവയെ മുറിച്ചു മാറ്റുന്ന അനുവാദം ചോദിക്കുകയും അവിടെ താമസിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന പക്ഷി മൃഗാദികളോട് അനുഗ്രഹം വാങ്ങുകയും അവരുടെ അവരിൽ നിന്നും അനുവാദം വാങ്ങുകയും ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് നിർമ്മാണ പ്രവർത്തനം തുടങ്ങുന്ന ഒരു വലിയ സംസ്കാരമായിരുന്നു മലയാളിക്കുണ്ടായിരുന്നത് അത്തരമൊരു സംസ്കൃതി നിലനിൽക്കേണ്ടതിൻ്റെ ആവശ്യത കൂടി ഇത്തരം ദിനങ്ങൾ നമ്മെ ഓർമ്മപ്പെടുത്തുകയാണ് അസറ്റ് ഹോംസിനെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ഓരോ ഉപഭോക്താവിനോടും നിലവിലുള്ള നിയമ സംഹിതകളോടും നിർമ്മാണ രീതികളോടും ഉള്ള ഉത്തരവാദിത്വമാണ് ദ റെസ്പോൺസിബിൾ ബിൽഡർ എന്ന പദാവലിയിലൂടെ ഞങ്ങൾ അർത്ഥമാക്കുന്നത് അതേ റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി തന്നെ ഞങ്ങൾ നിർമ്മിക്കുന്ന നിർമ്മിതികളോടും ഉണ്ടാവണം എന്ന വ്യക്തമായ ആഗ്രഹത്തിൻ്റെ ഒരു പ്രതിഫലനം കൂടിയാണ് വേൾഡ് ഹാബിറ്റാറ്റയിൽ നമ്മൾ സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുന്ന ഇത്തരം സംവാദങ്ങൾ ഏത് അടിസ്ഥാന വിശ്വാസത്തിന്റെ കാര്യത്തിലാണെങ്കിലും പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളുടെ ഒപ്പം വേണ്ട കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് പ്രഭാഷണങ്ങൾ പ്രഭാഷക പ്രഭാഷകന്റെ ചിന്താശകലങ്ങൾ സംരക്ഷണം ചെയ്യപ്പെടുമ്പോൾ ചിന്തോദ്ദീപ ദീപകങ്ങളായ ഒരുപാട് വിലയിരുത്തലുകൾ ആശയങ്ങളുടെ സംവാദങ്ങൾ സദസ്സിലുണ്ടായിത്തീരും ഇന്ന് ഈ വേദിയിൽ നിന്നും ഉയരുന്ന പ്രഭാഷണത്തിലെ ഒരു വരിയെങ്കിലും ഇവിടെ ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു വ്യക്തിയെങ്കിലും സ്വാധീനിക്കാൻ കഴിയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഞങ്ങളുടെ ഈ വലിയ ഉദ്യമം വിജയമായി എന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ കണക്കാക്കുകയാണ് ബിയോൺ സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന ഈ പദം ഒരു നിർമ്മാതാവ് ഉച്ചരിക്കുമ്പോൾ അതിൻ്റെ അർത്ഥങ്ങൾ വളരെ വലുതാണ് എല്ലാ അർത്ഥത്തിലും ആ വാചകത്തിൻ്റെ അന്തസത്ത പൂർണ്ണമായി ഉൾക്കൊണ്ടുകൊണ്ടാണ് വർഷത്തിൽ മൂന്ന് പ്രാവശ്യം ഇത്തരം പ്രഭാഷണ പരിപാടികൾ അസറ്റ് ഹോംസ് സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ജൂൺ അഞ്ച് വേൾഡ് എൻവയൺമെന്റ് ഡേ ഒക്ടോബർ മൂന്ന് വേൾഡ് ഹാബിറ്റാറ്റ് ഡേ മാർച്ച് ഇരുപത്തിരണ്ട് വേൾഡ് വാട്ടർ ഡേ ഈ മൂന്ന് ദിവസങ്ങളിലാണ് ബിയോൺ സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റ് എന്ന പേരിൽ അസറ്റ് ഹോംസ് പ്രഭാഷണ പരിപാടികൾ സംഘടിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ടുഡേ വി ഹാവ് വിത്ത് എസ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റി എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് എൻവയൺമെന്റലിസ്റ്റ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് ഇക്ബാൽ ഹബീബ് ഫ്രം ഥാക്ക ബംഗ്ലാദേശ് He is a leading architect working with the vision to promote responsible architecture for the society and environment for the past 25 years. Architect Habib has left his mark with a wide range of projects from small housing to larger urban development. With a lot of pride and respect, I take this opportunity to extend a very hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Nirmana Mekhrayile Pravartrangale Palapurdu Tharadime Pridu Bool. ചിലവ് കുറഞ്ഞ നിർമ്മിതികളാണ് സമൂഹത്തിൽ ഏറ്റവും ആവശ്യം എന്ന് പലപ്പോഴും നമ്മൾ പ്രഖ്യാപിക്കാറുണ്ട് എങ്കിൽ പോലും പലപ്പോഴും അത് പല കാരണങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ടും സംഘടിപ്പിക്കാനോ നിർമ്മിക്കുവാനോ സാധിക്കാത്ത സാഹചര്യവും നിലവിലുണ്ട് അസറ്റ് ഹോംസിന്റെ നിർമ്മാണ പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങളുടെ കൂട്ടത്തിൽ ഒരു പുതിയ സംഹിതയ്ക്ക് കൂടി ഞങ്ങൾ ഇന്ന് നാമകരണം ചെയ്യുകയാണ് അസറ്റ് ഓറ എന്നുള്ള പേരിൽ അഫോർഡബിൾ അർബൻ റെസിഡൻഷ്യൽ അപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ്സ് എ യു ആർ എ എന്ന പേരിൽ അസൻറ്റ് ഹോംസ് ആരംഭിക്കാൻ പോകുന്ന പുതിയ പദ്ധതിയുടെ പാർട്ട്നേഴ്സ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഞങ്ങളോട് സഹകരിക്കുന്ന മംസാർ ഗ്രൂപ്പിൻ്റെ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട എം ഡി ശ്രീ നൗഫലും അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ സുഹൃത്ത് ശ്രീ ഹാജി അറാഫത്ത് ഷെയ്ഖും ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നുണ്ട് രണ്ടുപേരെയും അസൻറ്റ് ഹോംസിൻ്റെ പേരിൽ ഞാൻ ഈ ചടങ്ങിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു നിർമ്മാണ മേഖലയുമായി ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട കാര്യങ്ങളിൽ കേരളത്തിലും ഭാരതത്തിലും അത് ഉപഭോക്താക്കളുടെ ആവട്ടെ നിർമ്മാതാക്കളുടെ ആവട്ടെ സമൂഹത്തിൻ്റെ ആവട്ടെ ആ പ്രശ്നങ്ങൾ എന്നും സജീവമായി ഇടപെടുന്ന നിർമ്മാതാക്കളുടെ ഉത്തരവാദിത്തപ്പെട്ട സംഘടനയാണ് ക്രടായി ക്രടായിയുടെ സംസ്ഥാന ചെയർമാൻ ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രിയപ്പെട്ട സുഹൃത്ത് ശ്രീ കെ വി ഹസീബ് അഹമ്മദ് ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ക്രടായിയുടെ കോഴിക്കോട് ഘടകത്തിലെ പ്രസിഡന്റ് ശ്രീ ബൈജു ബൈജു നായരും ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് രണ്ടുപേരെയും അസറ്റ് ഹോംസിന്റെ പേരിൽ ഞാൻ സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു അതിലൂടെ ഇവിടെ എത്തിച്ചേർന്നിരിക്കുന്ന കോഴിക്കോട്ടെ പ്രമുഖ പൗരാവലിയെയും ഞങ്ങളുടെ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ഉപഭോക്താക്കളെയും മുഴുവൻ അഭ്യുദയകാംക്ഷകളെയും പത്ര മാധ്യമ സുഹൃത്തുക്കളെയും ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഉദ്യോഗസ്ഥന്മാരെയും മറ്റ് പ്രൊഫഷണൽ അസോസിയേഷൻ ഭാരവാഹികളെയും എല്ലാവരെയും ഹൃദയത്തിന്റെ ഭാഷയിൽ ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി ഈ ചടങ്ങിലേക്ക് ഞാൻ സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു ബിയോൺ സ്ക്വയർ ഫീറ്റിന്റെ തുടർന്നുള്ള എഡിഷനുകളിലേക്കും നിങ്ങൾ എ
ഞാൻ എന്റെ സ്വാഗത പ്രസംഗം ഉപസംഹരിക്കുന്നു നന്ദി നമസ്കാരം is mentioned by our md we are fortunate to have a mixtus architect ikbal habib leading architect from dhaka to share his views and insights with us on city bond low income housing initiatives architect ikbal habib founder and acting managing director of witty stapadi brindo limited dhaka has been a leading architect of working with a vision to promote a responsible architecture for the society and environment for over two decades he is a bachelor of architecture from bangladesh university of engineering and technology and a fellow of institute of architects bangladesh he has received awards and recognitions including the highest acclaim from iib and several regional awards like aya india for excellence in architecture In 2007 he became an Eisenhower fellow on completion of the common interest program challenges of urbanization he has left his mark with a wide range of projects from small housing to large urban development architect habib was involved with social and environmental activism through organizations such as bangladesh environment movement spreha foundation bangladesh ekmatra foundation bangladesh etc he actively participates in the field of education as part of the education and trustee committee of bangladesh university and as a member of the executive board of directors in bengal institute of architecture he is also a review member of the detailed area plan of dhaka metropolitan development plan he has given numerous lectures and presentations and participated in several seminars and public awareness raising dialogues architect habib is an active organizer and promoter who relentlessly works to drive change on public issues and for the urban renewal of dhaka city architect habib along with his partner architect ishtiaq zahir have made extensive contributions to the development of the capital city of dhaka they have been instrumental in the integrated development of hadir jeel area including areas around Begunbari Canal, Dhanmundi Lake and Gulshan Banani Bhadra Lake, canal restoration in Narayan Ganj, urban regeneration in Rangpur, public space development in Rajshahi and Tungipara are some of the other noted projects. Other responsible and sustainable development projects include Duzai Resort at Maulavi Bazar, Visitor Center in Lavchala, Krishibad Institution in Dhaka and Bagha Bandhu Mausoleum in Gobal Ganj to name a few. With great pleasure and profound respect, let's now invite architect Iqbal Habib to share with us his insights and experiences on city bond low income housing initiatives. Welcome sir. ബംഗ്ലാദേശിന്റെ തലസ്ഥാനമായ ധാക്കയുടെ മുഖഛായ മാറ്റിയ ഒട്ടനവധി നിർമ്മാണ പദ്ധതികൾക്ക് രൂപം നൽകിയ സുപ്രസിദ്ധ വാസ്തുശില്പി ശ്രീ ഇക്ബാൽ ഹബീബ് അദ്ദേഹം ചിലവ് കുറഞ്ഞ പാർപ്പിട പദ്ധതികൾ നഗരങ്ങളിൽ എന്ന വിഷയത്തെ ആസ്പദമാക്കി നമ്മോട് സംസാരിക്കുന്നു it is definitely a great pleasure and honor to be here a country a part of india which is very similar to mine and i felt like uh, as if i am in my home so thank you very much for giving me this honor and pleasure first of all i would like to apologize for my uh, partner ashtiak jagid who happens to be selected uh, uia member union of international architects for the next summit which is going to be in kyoto and he is he has been selected and he is preparing for his visa and etc so he apologize and i am conveying that to you today actually i am um, going to talk about a project an initiative which actually changed the policy of my country which is towards the city born workers especially rmg workers ready made garments workers and i will be covering also a couple of other areas just to relate this project first of all affordable urban housing initiative is almost like um, an area is there but you don't see it the problem is there the demand is there 
but most of the policy level people, they think that it's an issue we, sh we should have just, you know, put light on. And I think realization of this need is one of the fundamental absence in the policy of housing. Also, identification of these settlementless people who actually comes to city as laborers or losing their very land for erosion or cyclone or any other cause. So I will just go by these uh, five stage the realizations, identifications, the conception, implementation, before that the implications of these conceptions. First of all, when I'm, I'm speaking in front of you, half of me is actually an activist. Last 16 years I'm working for urban issues in my city and the cities around Bangladesh and also I'm practicing architect. It was February 2006, suddenly a call came to me to rush into a place where a youth shanti just gave him and I have to go there and make a report from my environmental movement organization. I went there and it was a devastating situation but that's not what struck me. A couple of dead bodies were there and I was very, very sad. And then I started moving around and exploring a lot of buildings made of tin, which is multi-layers, two-story, three-story, and it's so shabby, it's so tiny, and every one of them, they're sharing toilets, sharing kitchens, like Slap Dog Millionaire. And what struck me is, I was just wondering and asking a lady, how much you pay for as a rent for this small eight feet by eight feet space? And she said an amount and I started calculating. It was just, you know, wondering what's happening, trying to be a little bit empathetic. And I found, with my utter surprise, that a house like this, one light, one fan, shared toilet, shared kitchen, almost no ventilation, no natural light, and almost no amenities. Against my house, this is the house that I lived in for last eight years. I also a rental uh, tenureship uh, member, so I am paying my rent. And when I compare these two, I am paying 23.50 Bangladeshi taka, where she is paying 36 taka. And I was just stunned, wow. I am so much privileged in the society that I am living there with air condition, with everything and every day a salute from the God. And I am paying only just around 24 taka. And she is paying 36 taka. And this disparity, made me really, really a sort of angry. And then I started understanding what is the delivery situations in our country, especially this capital city, where 1.25 crore people lived in. And I found out of 100%, the delivery system, you know, how much, uh, you know, settlement or housing is developed every year, and deliver to the people who are living in. Almost 60% informal, and out of that, most of those are squatters or slums. That means they are not accounted for. So it is only the privileged people having all the city amenities, and the other part, which is the bigger part, they are paying more as rent than us but completely ignored. So we gathered with all other people, NGOs, social organizations, and tried to find out what is the problem. Why this 
users are having this sort of a situation for so long. If you look at the life they live, they are trying to have their own spatial quality which they used to have in their rural areas. They are trying to convert areas into their own comfort. But it was so tiny, it's, it's so inadequate that it sometimes it's almost unlivable. So we try to find out what is the problem, where lies the problem. We found first collateral ship. If they want to have some loan here and there, nobody ever gave them any kind of collateral ship or take into account any kind of collateral ship, even their job or anything else. And definitely an absence of approach, appropriate and creative. And of course, lack of governance and stewardship. There is nobody listening to these people and assuming responsibility. Assuming responsibility is one of the most important part, which I think Asset was talking about, assuming responsibility beyond square feet. So, we decided to come up with an orchestrated policy with different kind of perception and definitely find out the immense possibility as they are paying more than the middle income and high middle income people. So what we did is we started making hypotheses with projects areas here and there. And definitely the amount these people pay, we try to find out whether we can make projects where they can just give their normal rent and be owner in 10 to 11 years. And then we started making calculations here and there and also we found that the way we think our houses, they don't think like that. So fundamentally, not all the people working in those garment factories are having their families. They come to the city to work and after three months they go to their home and come back again after passing their small vacation. So it's kind of a mess system where they live together in one room, sharing common toilet and kitchen and everything. And the other typology is having family. But in both cases, sharing is a common phenomenon. Nobody minds to share. The reason is in our rural areas, people share toilets, people share a bathing place. People in most cases also share their kitchen. So it's just habituated. So this is how we calculated spaces. And then we estimated. And we found that it's possible with a little bit of manipulation here and there. In 12 quarters, in seven milestones, with three years construction period, it is payable. First of all, we couldn't manage to make it 10 years. It was almost like 15 years. Then we went to the government of uh, Bangladesh Bank, who happens to have some projects called Jonopod. Jonopod means uh, people who are rural losing their land to Jodhar and you know, Zamindar, or to calamity like Sidor, Isla, you know, Cyclone. Government just go uh, and make some small settlements here and there and give loan in 3.5 to 4 percent interest. So we went there and negotiated. Can we put that money to the same people who are coming to the city and trying to live their life? And they agreed. And with uh, calculating all this investment, management cost, running cost, depreciations, land cost, and having some social amenity cost, we found that with that LIBOR rate, LIBOR is, you know, London-based interbank uh, 
borrowing it, which Bangladesh government is also lending to special projects, it is feasible. Only we have to bring the cost down. Now, to bring the cost down, it is the job of the architects and the engineers to find out the right kind of solutions, the innovative solutions. So as a result, the benefits, it's viable, it's sustainable, acceptable to people who are living there with standards, and definitely it's hygienic with social spaces. I'll talk about the social spaces a little later. Now, with this all of this value addition, the results came into being in the realizations. And this realization is basically 36 taka as they were paying for each family per month and individual 22 taka per month, they became the owner of a beautiful place. Now when we really, really thinking about what would be the sustainable development in that context with cost effective and with social spaces, we try to find out that most of the rural people were coming into the city to take their norms, culture, and cultural perception, perceptions of the space as a whole with them. Fundamentally, courtyard, we call it Uthan. I was talking to Mr. Baizu and he was telling me they call it Nadu. The, this Muttam Nadu is a very, very core idea of uh, people of our rural areas and whenever they come to the city, some of them want to make this courtyard. We call it Uthong. This Uthong again, when they share with each other, they make it Angan. Angan means Angina. So Uthong to Angan, Angan to Prangan. Prangan is a little bit bigger place where they share cultivating land, they share common place of worship and everything. Then it goes to the Prantar. Prantar is where actually they have schools, they have fields, they have bazaar and everything. So it's just the whole country is kind of development of courtyards in bigger forms. And we felt that if we can create a courtyard within the complex and we make them well ventilated space, that courtyard and that ventilated small units can make their whole life as if a resemblance of the rural living. So we took two places, two sides. One was like this, where we put our concept with cross ventilations, with courtyards, a kind of a environment like this. And you see, we compared this with a lot of other projects, which was done in India, in some other countries. And where we found that just by having the density, by having the cost effectiveness of the land, which is very, very pricey in Dhaka, we can really make it a creative solution, through a creative solutions, affordable for everyone. And with that, we came with another concept, which is Angan to Prangan, Prangan to Pranta, and that concept is also creating a livable, affordable solution for everyone. This project, which you can see right now in the plan, having courtyards, which is shared by different kind of users. One part may be the people who are having set families and the other part who are actually having mesh system. We have this land, which is 
little bit lower than the road as this city has and we started thinking that how we can protect it from the flood which is a regular phenomenon in those underlying we call it plavon bhumi that means the flooding areas and usually what we do is we we dig and build or we put a magnet around and protect the land and then fill it up with sand and build up on top of it here what we did is we made it a magnet all around as our boundary wall and we did to fill it up we started the building from that level as the embankment is all around we have extra one layer just because we change the perception of the boundary wall itself so from outside you will see there is no boundary wall but actually a boundary wall is there to make one floor at the bottom let's see how that came out so this is the land which is connected with um, a road at the right side and all around is paddy lands and the canal is at the bottom so every monsoon or every flooding year flooding season it gets flooded but the embankment which we made around is going to protect it from outside water but these people having a canal around the flash flood water which is drain out from this plot of theirs so the things comes like this these now having not only just houses it has school elementary school it has medical center and it has a field not only the courtyards we have seen inside also outside it has a field and that field actually giving them the opportunity to offer something beyond their need to the people living around to come and play you see it is how we create this space which will be later on used according to their a uh, festival and everything you know even for a wedding ceremony they can use that space and the ground layer which is actually connected with ramps and everything is given to the laborers who are physically challenged or old in many cases these days because of the compliance issue every factory almost have almost 5 to 7 percent people who are physically challenged they are bound to give them job now for their living condition you need to have them somewhere so you put them on the ground level where they don't need to climb any stairs and the canal which is flowing around we raised the ground level a little bit above that but that canal is always a part of the social space inside if you look at the corridor screen it's all made of bamboos and as we have bamboos in abundance like kerala we use those bamboos as screens which is operable you can move it and have the whole corridor exposed and wherever you need it if there's scorching sun you can just pull it in and you have your own private space without sacrificing your ventilations and all the roofs we have in different layers we use it as gardens so gardens are at the ground level as well as on the roof so there are series of gardens in different layers which is utilized as social space as well as fundamental rain catcher for rainwater harvesting we also have you know uh, some water bodies just to have those rain water we receive from different layers of roofs to have a water body inside to keep the whole place a little bit cool because of the water body at the middle of the courtyard 
that's how it is now. So corridor. Project is now 60% completed. We hope that uh, next June will be the completion date when all the workers will be living there. The interesting part is all of this, uh, every detail were discussed, participated by a group of laborers who happens to be the elected members to be the discussant, to be uh, the discourse participant, to develop the program, to develop the way the living condition will be. So it is now their space. Though uh, the money came from the initiative of the RMG owner, but at one point of time, after eight to ten years, they will be the owners. So we didn't talk to the uh, government's owners. We talked to those laborers who will be there later on as the client. <coughs> that is what I was ta talking about, you know, the ground level which is given to physically challenged people, but the roof is again giving another layer, again another layer of ground uh, feeling as if you, you are on the ground level. So you, when you enter from the road, you enter on top of the roof of the ground level. But you realize that until you get into the courtyard and you see that there are two courtyards, it will be sunken. It all happened because we didn't raise the land. We rather raised the embankment, the boundary, all around it. That's how the project will look like. So this is uh, now changing the whole perspective of low-income people's affordable housing in Dhaka. When I'm talking to you, almost 56 projects is on the line. Each project is containing 2,500 to 5,000 household people. And developers in associations, they're coming forward because they found it a lucrative business opportunity because all those calculations that I was showing you with 15% profit within 10 to 10 and a half years they can either give those people rent to own or after 11 years they can just sell it as a small unit of houses to new buyers so for at least for 10 to 11 years, the workers who's gonna, who's gonna live there will have a proper, sustainable, environment-friendly living conditions. And what they're doing is, the developers are making a joint venture with the owners of the government's people. So the government's people are taking the loan from the government, the developers are coming in the picture as <coughs> developing those, and after 10 years, the developing are becoming the owner of the whole project. And for these 10 years, these government's owners, they're actually paying the developer only the rent they're taking as, as share for, from each and one laborers at their rental expenses. I believe it was not just an initiative. It was an opportunity which came out of a problem. So it is how we look at the problem. If we find it is an opportunity, then I think solutions are always lying there. So I was thinking only to talk about this project, but suddenly uh, I just got the news that we got uh, another project, um, um, another two hours for two projects of ours. I was not thinking of showing you that one of those projects, but um, it is a privilege for us, which we receive on, on the 13th of this month from um, the Central Minister for, of, of India, the AIA Architect of the Year Award 2016 for one of our projects. I will show you, I'd like to show you that project today. I just got the news that 
this project got award from um, America Architects Design Award for this year as silver award. The jewelers were, if there are any architects, they will know Cesar Pelli, Van Von Bartel, and Alejandro Zarera. And I believe um, it will be our pleasure to share that project with you too. This is a project in an area almost similar kind of contour and similar kind of undulations like this city has. So um, this is the award, the American Architecture Award, uh, AAP 2016, we got a silver. If you look at this concept, we had, um, as I, I was telling you, that uh, we have valleys and we have <coughs> slopes. And what we did is we tried to identify different functions for the valleys and different functions for the slope, but not the top of it. We kept the top of it, as I was talking about, the uthon, the courtyard, the place to look at, the place which is, you know, in your language you call it Muttam Nadu. So that Muttam Nadu is, um, is on top. If you look at it more carefully, if you look at this, this uh, side plan, there were natural valleys and we kept those valleys for swimming pool, health facilities at one side, another one for uh, sports facilities, lawn tennis court, blah, blah, another one for kid facilities. And we never touched any land for the buildings because we, like the hilly people, we just tilted the structure on the slope without touching the slope and like Glenn Market used to say, touch the art lightly, we just did that. So if you look at it in the section, then a land was like that in an undulation with the traditional way of living by the Hindi people. We just made some columns, put the buildings on top of it and that is on the slope. So when the runoff comes in, it goes off without touching the building and building is also not touching that valley as well as that Uttan or Uttam Nadu. So thus the wall dissolves, it becomes transparent and it gives a frame view of nature. It's like cinematography. The architects is deciding what to see or what not to. And I think that's most important. Because I, didn't, I cannot just create another beautiful nature. It's the Almighty who can only do that. But I can make, like cinematography, frames, a place, a space from where you see and with the idea of phenomenology, where consciously and unconsciously you develop a kind of a perceptions that gives you the beauty and the peace. So now we have balconies like this, looking at the tea garden around. And I think through the interconnections with the landscape, by dissolving structures on the periphery of the natural space and within the vegetations, it almost like blending into the nature, beholding the nature, not interpreting it. We have a tendency to really understand nature much better than what it is. And what you do is, we have to interpret it into our own way. It is time to understand more empathetically you didn't only behold it. You know the first house built was because they wanted to keep 
the fire out of the rain. A French artist drawn it. And I think uh, Heidegger has publicized it very much. That with a couple of branches tied up together, they wanted to make a god of a griho to put the fire protected. That's how people want to look at nature. If you look at the jungle book, where Mukti lives with the nature, he cannot think that a snake, a tiger, or a Sher Khan can be his enemy. He was wondering why he is so angry with me. But it is us who make fear, who make doubts, who make everything interpreted in our own ways. So I think the perceptions, the phenomenology, looking at things as a beholder, that you live, I live. Because it is important for me to be a part of you. In Africa they call it Ubuntu. Ubuntu means generalized, if I, if I make it more generalized, it is I am because we are. If there is no we, then I am not there. So it's a feeling that we have to be empathetical and we have to have everything within ourselves. The moment we started forgetting that, look at the world now. I think it was the industrial revolutions which is to be blamed. When we made via Alva by Alva Edison light, we thought that we don't need the sun anymore. When you made the air condition, we thought, why we don't need the air anymore? But look what we have done. So I think it is looking at things in a different perspective and making the nature as a setting and again as a cinematography, look at frames, how that can be a part of you. These days, Developers are trying to make more bigger living rooms. But why can't we make a beautiful city and more bigger windows? We have to think like that. Maybe that's what beyond the square feet means. Maybe that's what the sustainable development is all about. You see, if we ignore the 44 to 50% of the people, I was in Bangkok, I, I know, Mumbai, for five hours to catch up another plane for this place. And I was moving around with a uh, taxi driver. And I was so, I was feeling so bad and so sad that I saw Bombay for the last 15 years and it is almost like sand steel. Still there are very beautiful glass buildings are coming out and the shanties are still there in the same way, as if they don't exist. How many roads a man has to walk before you call him a man? It's like that. I mean, why so? We have to think that if those kids are raised there, malnourished, becoming drug lord, paddlers, or thugs, where my children will be? And look at the proportion their proportion is getting higher because they are bidding like anything. So if they have five children, I have two children, what will be after ten years? Where will my children will be going to school, field, playing around? With whom? We have to look at with everybody. And that's what is important for the project I was showing you beforehand. If you look at this buildings, it's almost, you know, we try to make it blend it into the nature. Look at the roof. It is traditionally, we call it chong. It's in, uh, it's, 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 it's found in mostly in uh, Sundarban, which is uh, a similar kind of man roof. And it's a different kind of uh, plant. And traditionally, the houses are built with having this uh, thatch roof and changing every three to four years. <laughs> because it gives a very cool environment in hot days and very warm environment in cool days. So we use that. But if you go inside, it's five star. So it's, it's not very important to be, you know, 
artificially glass building here and there and make a five star space or environment. <coughs> this is a, we call it um, T Valley Westland. It's another valley where we made an amphitheater, open amphitheater. This particular restaurant is Carvelinia, just standing on some stilted pillars, pilotis. And beyond that, there is a tea garden, which you can see from this restaurant. And of course, inside, it is not air conditioned. Beautiful breeze, always making people enjoying that space much more better. And that's the valley which we use for health facilities, swimming pool, exercise spaces, everything. So when you are walking around those uthons, those courtyards, you enjoy the courtyard, looking at the houses on the snow and looking at the valleys, having the facilities, as if the whole purpose of this development is to give the or is to celebrate these courtyards where no structures, nothing, only a couple of huts under the trees. We are now looking at that restaurant from the other side, from the tea garden. So that's how I like to end today's presentation. Thank you very much. And I welcome any kind of questions or comments from your side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for your informative and inspiring insights. And accept our heartiest congratulations for winning the award. A big round of applause. So now we move on to the interactive session of the program. The respected members of the audience can come forward with your suggestions, comments, feedbacks, questions, if any, to the speakers. Please raise your hand and introduce yourself. We will come to you. Ningal kula api prayengal nardeshengal samshengal endu maga kaiyu yarthaga engal motu varya. Any questions? First of all, um, we have a research institute called Bang, uh, Building Research Institute of Bangladesh. So um, they work with, uh, we have a bamboo called Borak. Borak is very straight, simple, um, without center uh, nuts, center um, knots in between. I used bamboo only as a screen in front of the corridors. You see, if you looked at uh, the project, the corridor was fundamental primary social spaces. If you can remember the design, each house has its own living areas, but what we call it our drawing room or living space where we meet with others, it doesn't have that social space. 
what we were thinking is this corridor that will be that social space. So it's, it's, it's more of a social corridor. Now, social corridor, if you just have social corridor all around, the bachelors are living at that one side, maybe it's female, the female bachelors are living on the other side, or the families. Maybe they need some privacy at any point of time, or maybe there is a scorching sun. They don't want this sun uh, at around 2 or 3 p.m. What they do, they can pull this screen in front and they can make their own, that social space, which is a corridor, protected from the driving rain as well as scorching sun or for the reason of privacy. So bamboo I used only in that area. But for the windows, I didn't use bamboo. I used mild steel windows with glasses. That's it. True, true. The uses, you know, when materials are like, uh, you know, for an architect, materials are like um, gold. It doesn't matter you give me a brick in one hand or a gold piece in another one. Like um, Louis Aikan, he was giving a lecture in, in Buet in, in, in my university and my teacher used to say this to me that uh, he was asked why you make everything you know, out of brick? And why you make arch with brick? It's a very tough job. He said, every material is very important for me. When I came and I found that people in Dhaka, they're very really used to having this sun-dried brick. And I took one brick and I was talking to him. This is his description. And I asked him, brick, what do you want to be? And he said, I want to be an arch. So I made arch. So you see, it's, the materials comes not as a preconceived uh, element that I have to use bamboo for this project. No, it came, you know, um, out of the need, out of the perceptions, because I was having pressure to put the cost, which is usually 2,500 taka per square feet, I have to put it below 1,600. So it was a tough job for me. I made eight inch brick outside walls. Eight inch brick, if there are the architects, they know. Five inch brick, 10 inch brick. Eight inch brick is a very complex bonding. I had to go for it. I had to go uh, a special kind of walls, which is which is uh, actually, uh, um, you know, thin walls of concrete as in between partitions. So there are a lot of compromises or adjustments so bamboo came all of, all, of, all, of, all of a sudden because the wood is very expensive in Bangladesh. We are almost um, um, out of around 42% of the forest. We are now around 23 to 24%. So we are forest grammar people. So I didn't want to go for wood anymore. So I avoided wood from this project completely and that's how I, I put down the cost into 16,600 plus per square feet. So bamboo came from, from that perspective. But thank you very much uh, that you were thinking of coconut trees also. You know, it is our architect's job, it is our engineer's job to find out the best way of using all the materials we are just throwing away. Because as I was telling you, the waste may be the wealth, the problems may be the opportunities. We have to think continuously, and that's how we can manipulate for a better world. Yeah, please, please. I think your lecture was really poetic. You know, you you were fully involved in the in the presentation. Probably it will be shock to the community assembled here. When you said that you were under pressure and made the cost of the construction at 1,600 square feet, definitely the asset home safety is really might have shocked. Because I had a tough time to convince him that there are level three constructions required. Example, there's a couple is working, the government, wife and husband is working. The volume, large chunk of the people is not able to have a house because of the cost. Cost has become a Bible for them. 3,000 square feet, I can go down. I cannot, it's impossible. 
Four thousand, it's a luxury. Six thousand, if you need trees like this, what you made it. So my advice to you is just open up the minds of the people assembled here from the construction industry to cater to the needs of the large volume of the people. They're looking for the around one fifth of the one one third of the population that not having the home, real home. So give I like some points which can bring down the construction cost, like one of the respected members was telling the coconut tree. And there are a lot of trees in, in Kerala which can be used. The people who come to my home, who can understand the difference between the tree and the better wood, is 5%, right? Yeah. They can see and differentiate. Yes. Why should I waste that money to construct the unaffordable homes? So my request to you is just highlight the people or, or enlighten the people's mind to change their concept of imposing the square feet rate to the needy people. And what are the ways to do that? Please. Thank you very much, sir. You spoke every one of our mind, I believe. It's not that uh, there is some opponent of yours. I think everyone, including, uh, as I was saying, uh, assets uh, main theme, we just keep on thinking beyond the square foot. We just have to keep on thinking beyond the box, out of the box. And it's time to have everybody inclusive. This inclusiveness became fundamental for any sustainable development. You cannot run anymore without taking those people along with you. So it will be, actually it is, it is not the developer's job alone. It is the job of the architects. It is the job of the engineers who are supposed to come up with the ideas. Do you, don't you think that a developer is also a businessman? He wants to have more projects, more clients. The, the moment he can get this price down, he can have more people as uh, to cater, so more clientele will be there. So they want that. But I think it's, it's, it's the job of the architects and also the social workers to change the perspective, perception. Our perception without marble, is it a house? You are not a developer at all. Where is marble? Why you need the marble? So you see, it is a demand we place in front of the developers and they start, you know, accommodating one after another, one after another, and the price goes up. And suddenly you realize I am I'm I'm caving my own grave. So it is, that's what happened. It's this mutual and we must look at things beyond what it is. You know, it's it's in Bangla, but it's it's Ravindona Tagore who said um, it's a beautiful song. Let me just sing it for two lines. He says, Kaan pite chhi, chokh mile chhi, dharar bhooke pran dhele chhi, janar madhe ajanare kuri chhi the meaning is, I gave my ear, I gave my eyes, I laid my eyes, and I put my heart, and then I realized there are unknown within the known. And that's how I wondering what a beautiful world the God has created where everything is part of me. That's what Tagore said. So you have to create or prepare your ear, your eyes, and your heart. Now, whatever I see, if I see it with money, okay, money, uh, poshness, price, prestige, you know, then I cannot have a living space, which is enduring my heart, enduring my good morning, you know. As I was telling you that we, our living rooms are getting bigger, but our windows are getting smaller. You know, you say you love the sun, but you close your windows. You say you love the rain, but you put your umbrellas. I'm afraid because you say you love me. Yeah,
definitely. I, I completely agree with you. You see, this is this is where you know all of us should look at as avenues where we can make the whole development perception as a sustainable development. So development, just bare development is now people hate it. Because you know, having 5,000 uh, rupee per square feet, these are all development. Nobody wants to hear about development anymore. We want to know sustainable development. And I think that's where you have to start thinking beyond square feet. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My program, Finance, was introduced in Bangladesh and it inspired the world over to emulate the model. So can you please stay on? And now we have architect Habib throwing light on new possibilities in ensuring adequate and decent shelter to the common man. Thank you once again, sir. And now I would invite Sri Hazib Ahmed, Chairman Kredai Kerala, to hand over a memento to a distinguished speaker as a token of our deep respect and heartfelt gratitude. And to think that architect has to come all the way from Bangladesh to explain to us the beautiful verses of Rabindranath Tagore. Thank you once again, sir. We have the chairman of Kredai Kerala here, Sri Hazib Ahmed, handing over the memento. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Today, as we celebrate the World Habitat Day, reminding us of the right to decent shelter of all human beings and the need for planning our cities and towns accordingly so as to provide adequate and affordable space for one and all. The thoughts and experiences shared by architect Habib on affordable housing is of utmost relevance today in this context. Asset Homes is happy to inform you that we have been investing our efforts to realize this vision of providing homes for all at affordable cost. Now the time has come to make a formal announcement of the Affordable Housing Initiative of Asset Homes known as AURA, Affordable Urban Residential Apartments. You will also be delighted to know that the first ever project under this initiative is coming up in your city, Kori Code. Parpidam Everkum in the lecture today, Asset Homes Vibhavanam Chedirikina, Aura in the Bhavana Nirmana Padadi, Tudakam Kurikapadana, Kori Koda Nagratilana in the Padari Sandusha Tode Arikiana. Now I would once again request architect Iqbal Habib to come over to the days to mark this historic moment with the symbolic launch of the initiative by unveiling the logo of Aura. I would also request Mr. Sunil Kumar, Managing Director at Homes, and Mr. Nafil Ahmed, Chairman of Mamza Group, to grace the stage on this momentous occasion. <laughs> Welcome, sirs. Renowned architect Iqbal Habib will now symbolically launch this new initiative of Asset Homes, Aura. We also have here Mr. Naufal Ahmed, Chairman of Mamza Group and the Managing Director of Asset Homes, Mr. Suri Kumar. A great moment for us, yes. Or your logo provisionum. Namri Mukia Prabhashagan Ipol and the Vaichar Giyana. Thank you, sirs. So, dear dignitaries and guests, now as we approach the conclusion of yet another informative and thought-provoking lecture from Beyond Square Free. Let me thank you one and all for honoring us with your presence, triggering positive interactions and introspections, as well as supporting us in this venture. Let me take this opportunity to thank personally and on behalf of Asset Homes, architect Iqbal Habib for taking out time from his busy schedule to travel all the way from Dhaka to be with us here today to share with us his experiences in the field. Let me also express my gratitude to Mr. Nafil Ahmed for coming here to participate in this event. I also thank personally and on behalf of his Homes, Mr. Hazi for his gracious presence on this occasion which is rather special to us. 
With these words, let me mark the close of the day's events part with a commitment to make our cities and towns a better place to live in for one and all. Thank you for your valuable presence and positive participation. Good night till we meet again. Let's now rise for the national anthem.